Yeah, there are, there are plenty of churches. Church on every corner just about. But what are the people being taught? What are the people being fed? Because our country is growing worse and worse. But people going to church. Behold the days come, said the Lord, that I will send a famine in the land. Not a famine of bread, nor a thirst of water, but of the hearing of the word of the Lord. The people don't want to hear the word of God. I mean, look at all of the foolishness that we have going on. I mean, there was an actual debate concerning homosexuality. There's an actual debate concerning abortion. Folks are debating this stuff, but and yet at the same time claiming to be some Christian. There's a famine. The folks, oh, they're eating. You know, naturally saying, uh, because you know the, the the CDC or the Centers of, of Disease and so forth, they come out and say that uh, there's a problem with obesity. Folks are. Gaining weight at an all-time high. They're eating. But they're not eating things that are nourished. Yes. Folks are going to church. And they're eating. But they are spiritually malnourished. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's just like a little child. You know, it, it, it's, you can't give that child cookies and candy and ice cream and soda all the time because that child will be malnourished and it, it is nothing more vexing to me than to see little children with the little silver teeth because you know they're, being, they're not being adequately fed and so it is today within the churches folks are eating a bunch of spiritual junk food and that's why there is no steadfastness anywhere. There are very few preachers that is going to stand up and tell it like it is. Amen. Behold, the days come, said the Lord, that I will send a famine. And we are in the midst of that famine. Amen. Not a famine of bread or a thirst of water. Mm -hmm. The Bible said, when Jesus said, if you drink of this, he told a Samaritan woman, if you drink of this water, the water that I have, you shall never thirst. I, I got some water, you'll never thirst. You know, folks are wondering, that, you know, what do we need to do? How do we get folks to come to church? Well, you first need to be hungry. Hungry for, the, for righteousness. Hungry for the real word of God. And unfortunately, people just don't have the appetite. For the real word of God. Behold the days come said the Lord. That I will send a famine in the land. Not a famine of bread. Nor a thirst of water. But for the hearing of the words of the Lord. You know, if you try to talk to people. And show them what the, the Bible says. I as literally had people to tell me. I, I don't care what that Bible says. But no need you talking to me then. I don't have, I have nothing to give you but the word of God. <laughs> and they shall wander from sea to sea. Oh, they're going all over, all over the country. This, this bishop have a conference, and that bishop have a conference, they, and they're they, they packing out stadiums. Mm -hmm. They shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord and shall not find. They're not going to find. All they're going to find is a bunch of spiritual pollution. Mm -hmm. Prosperity doctrine. Mm -hmm. That's all they're going to find. God got a blessing with your name on it. See, that sounds good. That make make you more, you know, and, and again, it's just like a little child. If I, any, any child would love me if all I gave them was cookies. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, all children would love me. But you know what? You need some vegetables. You need some broccoli. 
You gonna eat this broccoli or you're not getting nothing else. Mm -hmm. You need some asparagus. You need spinach because though that has vitamins and, 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 and minerals that you need for development. Go now, if you will, to 2 Timothy. <coughs> 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter. 2 Timothy chapter 4. We'll pick it up at verse 3. A famine in the land. Second Timothy chapter 4 and then verse 3. And the word of God says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. And we're in the midst of that season where folks just will not endure sound doctrine. I mean stuff that just makes sense. They rather something that don't even make any sense. Mm -hmm. You know, a preacher come along and tell you to send him some money, mm -hmm. and then God is on the hook to bless you. They 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 they, they won't follow that. Mm -hmm. Well, the preacher come along and tell you you got to quit your ways, you got to repent and turn to God and follow Him with all your heart, all your mind, all your might. Well, that that that's that's crazy talk to them. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Watch this, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. They just going to accept all kind of foolishness because it's an ear tickling message. Something that make you feel good about being right where you are. Nobody wants to challenge people to come up higher. Nobody wants to challenge people to walk up right. Mm -hmm. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. I mean, preachers come up with all kind of stuff. That stuff ain't nowhere in the Bible. And people flock to it. Look at verse 4 9. He says, And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. There is a famine in the land. They shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto faith. They, they will more readily accept a lie than they will the truth. Why is it that the truth is so offensive? Why do people not will, will readily embrace a lie and reject the truth? Why is that? Okay, okay, go now to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 59. Isaiah chapter 59. And we'll pick it up at verse... Uh, 15. Isaiah 59 and at verse 15. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 59. Isaiah chapter 59 and at verse 15. Word of God says, Yea, true failing. Yea, true failing. Some it just seems like true. It's failing. Mm -hmm. well, look at and watch this. And he that departed from evil maketh himself a prey. When you, anybody that, that want to turn from their wickedness and decide to, you're going to walk upright and do the things that please God. You make yourself a talk. Mm -hmm. You become hated. Mm -hmm. Folks want to talk about you. Folks want to lie on you. All because you don't do what you used to do. Mm -hmm. All because you don't act like you used to act. All because you don't go where you used to go. Yea, true failed. And he that departed from evil maketh himself a prey. Make yourself a talk. All you got to do is, 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 is change start living right and watch how people what watch how people start questioning you people want to invite you to the party but no I, I i'm not going what's wrong with you yo man we got some drinks man we got we got the, the coolers ready no no I, i'm not gonna go hey man what's wrong with you yea true failure and he that departed from evil making himself a prey and the lord saw it 
and it displeased him, and that, that pleased him that there was no judgment. The God is not pleased with how the standard have dropped. God not pleased with this stuff. And the churches are just going right along with it. You know, I saw something the other day where a, a preacher literally came out and said that the Bible does not speak against homosexuality. He said, those few little old scriptures, people take them out of contact. This, this is an actual, and he has a, a, a huge church. He said, a few little scriptures, it's only about seven or eight of them, and they take them out of contact. That's not speaking against homosexuality. That's what he said. And God saw that there was no, and watch this, verse 16. He said, and God saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. We don't have nobody standing up now. No intercessor. And Lord, the Lord, well, verse 15, let's get verse 15 again. It said, yea, true faith. And, and he that departed from evil maketh himself a prey, and the Lord saw it and is displeased. If God is not pleased with this mess, he's not pleased with this. <coughs> and, it, it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. No judgment. Okay, still in Isaiah, turn over to, uh, back to, to chapter 30 now. Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30, we'll, uh, get verse 1. Isaiah chapter 30, and that's verse 1. Isaiah chapter 30, and that's verse 1, and the word of God says, Woe to the rebellious children saith the Lord. We're in a rebellious generation. I mean a rebellious generation. You know, there was a time when, you know, the, you, the old saying, it, it, it takes a village, where the village really did raise us. Because if, if, if somebody saw you doing something, they were going to say something to you. They were going to say something. They weren't going to just go let you go and do an act like that. They, and they will pick up the, the telephone and call. I know my neighbor told on us a plenty of time. And you feel, well, how, how mama know about this? Somebody told. When report card time came, you 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 had to show your report card to more than just your, your parent. They, 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 everybody in the neighborhood knew when it was report card day. But now you ask a child about their grades, they did something because you are. Woe to the rebellious children, said the Lord, watch this, that take counsel, but not of me. They take counsel, but not of me. We are, it, it's, it's a family now. That take counsel, but not of me, that cover with the covering, but not of my spirit. That cover with the covering, but not of my spirit. Look, watch this. That they may add sin to sin. Mm -hmm. We in a family. And they 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 cover, they want to just cover up sin. Nobody want to expose it. Nobody want to preach against it. Nobody want to say you got to come out of it. They just want to cover. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, He that covered his sin shall not prosper. Verse 2, that walk to go down to Egypt and have not asked at my mouth. See, the Egypt here represents the world. You know, they want to go along with what the world does. The world is setting the agenda for the church. But it should be the opposite. The church should set the agenda for the world. They walk to go down to Egypt and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh. They want to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh. To trust in the shadow of each. They want to trust in this world. They trust in this world system. 
All right, for the sake of time now, for the sake of time, drop down to verse 8. We're still in Isaiah chapter 30, but at verse 8 now. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 8 now, the word of God says, Now go, write it before them in a table, and note it in a book, that it may be for the time to come forever and ever. See, now we got the word of God. The word of God is, is here, and it's nothing you can do about it. Look at verse 9, 9, it says, This is a rebellious people lying children that will not hear the law of the law there is a famine in the land it's a famine for the hearing of the word of god this is a rebellious people lying children children that will not hear the law of the law they don't want to hear nothing about the word of god With verse 10 watch this we say to the seers see not you know, and I actually have uh, people to email me and tell me what I should be preaching. Well, I don't think you should be preaching on that. And a woman called me and tell me I need to focus on love. Everything I preach is love. It's the word of God. It is love. Which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, look, watch this now, prophesy not unto us right things, Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy the sea. In other words, tell me something that's going to make me feel good. I go to church. I want to. And you see they put all this dancing and shouting. They, that's, they want excite. They want hype. They don't want truth. All oh, this excitement. At the count of three. I want everybody. To start speaking in tongues. That's hype. And I say, if anybody speaking tongues on the count of three, you will, you got the spirit of the devil. You ain't got the spirit of God in you. Can't nobody flip on no tongues and they flip them off. Like a switch, just flip your tongues on and they flip them off. The Bible say they speak in tongues as the spirit of God gave them up. Prophesy is a prophecy on the smooth thing. Prophesy the sea. You know, you, you watch, watch these so called prophets on, on, tel on tel so called Christian television. And they, they, it's very, always very generic. It, not, nothing specific. It's something real vague. Verse 11, now watch this, he said, get ye out of the way, turn aside out of the path, cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from us. We don't, don't, don't come here preaching all this Jesus stuff. Yo, you should preach an uplifting gospel. Tell me something that's going to make me feel good. Get you out of the way, turn aside out of the path, cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before. before. I mean, listen to this. Don't be in a family. Verse 12. Wherefore, thus said the Holy One of Israel, because he despised this word and trust in oppression and perverseness, watch this, and stay thereon. Therefore shall this therefore this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall, swelling out in a high wall, whose breaking coming sudden at an instant. You want to you want to stay on that way? Then you're gonna you, you're gonna suffer the consequences. Okay, okay, still in Isaiah now. Go back to chapter 5 now. Isaiah chapter 5. Amen, amen. Isaiah chapter 5. Pick it up at verse 11. Isaiah chapter 5. And 
Where's my death? Where the Lord says, Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning, that they may follow strong drink, that continue unto night, till wine inflame them. Yeah. And you have some people just like that. Amen. They wake up in the morning looking for a bottle, and they yeah. drink literally all day long. Yeah. And they're drunk. Mm -hmm. Drunkards. Mm -hmm. And verse 12, and the heart and the vial and the temperate and pipe and wine are in their feast. But they regard not the work of the Lord, neither consider the operation of his hand. Or they just want to party all the time. Just a, a, a perpetual party. And not, never giving God any glory. Never giving God any regard. There is a famine in the land for the hearing of the word of God. <laughs> Therefore my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge and their honorable men are famished and their multitude are dried up with thirst. And this is why the world is in the shape that it's in because we get further and further and further away from God. Amen. You know, in our community, there was a time where we looked out for each other. But now, we, instead of improving, I mean, we've always had been dealt with the short end of the stick. But and, and, and it seems like the more educated we get, the more the, the better job we get, the more foolish we get. Amen. Amen. There is a famine for the hearing of the word of God. <laughs> but look at verse fourteen. Watch. Look at verse fourteen. Therefore, hell. Have enlarged herself. So God got to have somewhere to put all these foolishness. Mm -hmm. He got to have a, somewhere to put all of this foolishness. Mm -hmm. Therefore hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure. Oh, you're not going to get by. God, God, he's making room for you. He's making room for you. Mm -hmm. Therefore, hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure, and their glory, and their multitude, and their pomp, and he that rejoices shall descend into it. He, he, he that rejoices, you rejoice in foolishness. God got a, God got a destination for you. And there's plenty of room for him. Because the Bible says, hell hath enlarged herself, and, and it's without measure. Verse 15, and the mean man shall be brought down, and the mighty man shall be humble, and the eyes of the lofty shall be humble. You, you coming down. But the Lord of hosts shall be exalted. God going to, every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess. But the, but the Lord of hosts shall be exalted. And the God that is holy shall be sanctified in righteousness. God going to get the glory. One way or another, he going to get the glory. <laughs> then shall the lambs feed after their manner, and the waste places of the fat ones shall the strangers eat. Woe unto them that draw iniquity with cause of vanity. And sin as it were with a cart rope. They indulge in sin. They take pleasure in sin. God came, God came into this world. He put on human flesh. He came that you can have victory over sin. He came that you can come out of sin. He didn't come for you to indulge in. But you see, there's a famine for the hearing of the word of God. Amen. See, the word of God will bring you out of sin. That's right. Whom the Son has set free is free indeed. But see, you got egghead preachers up telling the people they can't help but to sin. That they can't live right. <laughs> Woe unto them that draw in iniquity with cord of vanity and sin as it were with a cart rope. That say, let him make speed and hasten his work that we may see it 
and let the counsel of the Holy One of Israel draw nigh and come that we may know it. Watch this, verse 20. Watch this. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. And that's what's going on now, sir. They, they're calling evil good and good evil. Say, I've been trying to say something. Try not to try to put, just declare what the word of God says. They'll say this hate speech. Mm -hmm. Oh, hate, the, the word of God is hate speech. Mm -hmm. They're calling, and then you, you try, tell them try to say something is wrong. Well, that's your opinion. Yeah. Uh -huh. you know, I, somebody, I saw what somebody said uh, the other day. Uh, uh, let God judge. God have already made a decision about you. He's already judged. He's already called things, some things he called an abomination. Well, let God, only God can judge. <coughs> They say, let him make speak. Uh, uh, verse 20, rather. Woe unto them that call evil good. I, I don't see nothing wrong with it. Long, long as they happy, you call it evil good. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. See, y'all need to go on with all of that stuff. Well, watch this. That put darkness for light. And light for darkness. That put bitter for sweet. And sweet for bitter. Folks is just confused. All confused. They're just bound. Mm -hmm. The word of God is very clear. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, but there's a family. Oh, it's a family. Yes, Lord. For the hearing of the word of God. Amen. Verse 21. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes. And prudent in their own sight. Wise in their own eyes. Mm -hmm. The God made you. But you want to do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Woe unto them. That are mighty to drink wine. And men of strength. And mingle strong drink. Why, look at look, verse 23. Which justify the wicked for the walk. Long as they're getting something out of it. it, it, it it's alright. And that's what these preachers are doing. Long as I get a, a, a big offering, it's all right. Which justify the wicked for reward. Just like that fellow on, the, on that saying, the Bible don't speak against homosexuality. They're taking those scriptures out of context. What is he doing? He wants all of that, com he want that community to come flock to his church and bring their offering with them. Which justify the wicked for reward. Watch this. And take away the righteousness of him that is righteous. Therefore, as the fire devoured the stubble and the flame consumed the chaff, so shall their root shall be as rottenness, and their blossom shall go up as dust, because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts. And despise the word of the Holy One of Israel. God bringing all this mess down. It's going to come to naught sooner or later. Mm -hmm. Okay, go down to Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 6. Amen, amen. Jeremiah chapter 6. And we'll pick it up at verse... Uh, uh, let's get Jeremiah chapter 5 first. Jeremiah chapter 5 and at verse 30. Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse 30. Amen, amen. Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse at verse 30. Begin reading at verse 30. Jeremiah chapter 5 and at verse 30. The word of God says, A wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. A wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. Look, watch this. Verse 31. The prophets prophesy falsely, and their priests bear rule by their means. And my people love to have it so they love it because they flock into it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and what will you do in the end thereof? The, the, the prophets prophesy falsely and the priests bear rule. See, all, all these big time, they, they're all in cahoots. Mm -hmm. 
They're all covering for each other. They all go along with each other. I mean, all of these scandals that come out and these people supposed to be prophets and nobody didn't see nothing. You mean to, all, and nobody, you, you supposed to be a, a prophet now. Nobody saw what was going on with Eddie Long. You, but you supposed to be a prophet. <clears throat> Here y'all, they, they go preach for each other and nobody saw nothing. But he said the priest, the priest bear rule by their means. And the people love to have it so. Okay, going on into to chapter 6 now. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 6 and then verse 16. Amen, amen. <clears throat> Jeremiah chapter 6 and at verse 16. And the word of God says, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask, for the old past. And, and how many times have the people said, well, see, y'all stuck in that old way. See, see y'all need to get with the time. But the word of God says, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old past. Look at where, where is the good way and walk therein. Where is the good way and walk therein. Look, watch this. And ye shall find rest for your soul. You'll find rest for your soul. If you, if you get back to that old way, there'll be rest for your soul. Get back to, to, to fervent prayer. Get back to fasting. See, when you fast and, and you spend time in prayer, this world becomes less important to you. Stand in the ways and see and ask for the old past, where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your soul. But look, look, watch what it says here. But they say, we will not walk therein. There is a famine in the land. A famine. But hearing the word of God. <clears throat> Alright, verse 17 now. He says, also I said, watchman, over you saying, Hearken to the sound of the trumpet. I said, watch me, you know. There are a few preachers out there that haven't bowed down. There are a few preachers out there that are still preaching holiness of hell. There are a few preachers that are preaching right. There's still a few of us out here now. Also, I said, watch me, you know, you saying, hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But watch, look, look what it is. Watch this now. But they say, we will not hearken. We will not hearken. I don't want to hear that. <clears throat> Verse 18. Therefore hear ye nations and know, O congregation, what is among you. Hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they, what, what, what's this? Because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor to my law, but rejected. And we wonder why things are the way they are. Okay, okay. Go now to Ezekiel. We get ready to close. Ezekiel, chapter uh, thirty-three. Ezekiel, chapter thirty-three. We're gonna get ready to get out of here. Ezekiel chapter thirty-three. We just picked up that verse one. Hallelujah. There's a famine in this land, but the table of the Lord is, is, is spread. Ezekiel chapter 33, and we begin reading at verse 1. What is it? And the Bible says, And again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak unto the children of thy people, and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon the land, if the people of that land take a man of their coats and set him over their watchmen, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people, then whomsoever heart heareth the sound of the trumpet, and take it not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his head. This is why I preach the way I preach. Because I have to, I have to warn, 
And once I warn you, it's up to you. It's on you now. But, but, but let's read on now. Watch this now. He he heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him, but he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. If you hear, if you hear me, then you're gonna deliver your soul now. What I, what I got can help the world now. I'm telling folks to repent. I'm telling folks to be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm telling you to seek God until he fill your soul with the Holy Ghost. Then, then you'll save your soul. See, that's old fashioned. But folk don't want that now. There is a famine in the land. Okay, verse 6. Now watch this, verse 6. But if the watchman sees the sword come and blow not the trumpet. We got a whole bunch of watchmen that's not blowing their trumpet. But if the watchmen see the sword, they see the destruction coming. And yet they won't say nothing. Because they don't want to offend people. But the word of God is offensive. Mm -hmm. The word of God is offensive. Yes, it is. Now, the old saints used to say the word, it'll drive you or draw you. But if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will be required at the watchman's hand. Y'all, your blood not going to be on my hand. Oh, no. I'm going to preach the word of God. I'm going to preach the raw, naked word of God. I don't care who will hear me. If you don't hear, that's on you. It's not going to be my fault. I'm going to tell you what this Bible says. Now you can go out there and follow Bishop Boleg and, and all of that mess if you want to. But you done heard the real word of God. And you know what? When you when you die and you come back, you're going to stand right in front of this word of God. Mm -hmm. That's right. Thank you. That's right. Verse 7. So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear of the... the therefore... Thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. And that's what we're doing. We're warning the people. Yes. Look at verse 8. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die if thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way. That wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. You see, that's why I tell people, don't, I tell, you know, I have uh, young preachers contact me. I said, don't be so quick to jump in no pulpit now. Right. Right. Oh, this is a big responsibility. It's a big responsibility. And it's, 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 it's not like the stuff you see on TV, the, the preachers of L.A. and all that. So people not going to love you. When you stand for what God stood for, and we looked at that on last time, where you said, if the world hated me, you know it hated you, you know it hated me. And verse 9 now, no, watch this. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked out of his way to turn from, and that's all we're doing. We're trying to get folks to repent. Uh -huh. Repent. Mm -hmm. That means stop what you're doing and turn away from it. Yeah. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he do not turn away from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. So I, when I, if I stick to the word, I'm delivering my soul. I heard the apostle Paul say, Woe is me if I preach not the gospel. If I come up here and start preaching a bunch of other garbage, woe, woe is on me now. There's a famine in the land for the hearing of the word of God. Look at verse 10 now. Therefore, O thou son of man, speak to the house of Israel. Thus ye speak, saying, If our transgression and our sins be upon us, and well, look, look, look now, and we pine away in them, how shall we live? If we keep doing it, how are we going to live? And we just pine away in them, how are we going to live? Then what is, how are we going to have eternal life if we don't change? How are we going to have eternal life if we don't come out of sin? Verse 11, say unto them, as I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. 
But I, but I over in the book of Psalms, I heard him say, Precious, in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his saints. The Lord takes pleasure when, the, when a child of God falls asleep. The Lord takes pleasure in that. I heard over in Revelation, he said, Blessed are they that die in the Lord. Say unto them, as I live, it saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but to, that the wicked turn away from, turn away and live, turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will ye die, O house of Israel? Turn ye, why will you die? You don't have, nobody has to be lost. The Bible said it's not his will that any should perish, but that all Come to repent. That's all God asks him for. He wants you to repent. That's right. To come out of this foolishness. Mm -hmm. And he wants the preachers to start preaching repentance. Yes. They should have never stopped preaching repentance. Yes. Amen. They should have always been calling, calling people back to God. Right. Come on back to God. Mm -hmm. At verse 12 now. Therefore thou son of man say unto the children of Israel to say unto the children of thy people Thy righteousness of the righteousness shall not deliver him in the day of his transgressions. As for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall fall not thereby in the day that he turneth from his wickedness. See, now, you, if you've been cutting up, mm -hmm. you've been living a rambunctious life. Mm -hmm. But if you turn, mm -hmm. if you repent, mm -hmm. if you go down and water in the name of Jesus Christ, if you seek God till he fills your soul, all of that wickedness won't count against you. It won't count against you. Look, look now, now, look, he said, Therefore thy son of man say unto thy, the children of thy people, The righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression. Now see, and I, you, you know I tell y'all all the time, however you go down, that's how you get done. That's why if, once you get in this, you got to stay here. Because the righteousness of the righteous, that you step out there and you die out there, higher, he that is filthy, let him be filthy still. So it doesn't matter how you could have been saved and lived holy for 60 years. And if you step out for two minutes and die, higher you go down. That's how you get up. That's how you get up now. All of that righteousness not going to cover those two minutes. Oh no. You got to come over here and you got to stay here. You got to be planted. You got to be rooted. Continue. <coughs> Continue. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Where God said, Therefore thy son of man say unto the children of thy people, The righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression. That's why you be quick to repent. Don't, don't never justify your wrong. Be quick to repent. Because you don't know where the Lord is. I am not, I am you go down. That's how you get up. I have some folk getting mad with me because I preached this at a funeral. I preached, I am you, I, I went to Revelation. And I, he that is filthy, let him be filthy still. Mm -hmm. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. Some folk got upset with that. Mm -hmm. But see, I'm charged to preach the word. To be instant, in season, out of season, whether it's popular or not. I, I got a charge to keep. Therefore, thy son of man say unto the children of thy people, thy righteousness of the righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression. As, as for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall thereby in the day that he turneth from his wickedness. Neither shall the righteous, righteous be able to live for his righteousness in the day that he sinned. So come on over here and stay now. Come on over here and get planted. Look at verse 13. When I shall say unto the righteous, he that he shall surely live. If he watch this, if he trusts to his own righteousness, watch this, and committed iniquity, all his righteousness shall not be remembered. Mm -hmm. All his righteousness shall not be remembered. You know, and, and, and uh um I remember when, when Michael Jackson died. Mm -hmm. The people want to say, well, see, we, we just need to focus on the good that he done. Look, look this is the word of God here now. We don't need, just focus on the good that he done. 
Mother, you've been in this thing a long time. Don't step high. Because you, you've been up there, like, what, by far, it's close to 50 years now. And if you step high for two minutes and go down, all 50 years will count for nothing. Brother Allen, you've been over here a good while now. If you step out, but for a minute, all of that praying, all of that, that living right that you did won't count for nothing. It won't count for nothing. And when I say unto the righteous that he shall surely live, if he trusts in his own right. See, now if the night living right, that's going to save you now. But if you trust in, in that righteousness as opposed to, to the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, when I need it, now you got things out of balance. Mm -hmm. When I say unto the righteous that he should surely live, if he trusts in his own righteousness and committed the iniquity. Now, all, look, look, all his righteousness shall not be remembered. But for his iniquity that he has committed, he shall die for it. And that, that's talking about eternity now. <coughs> Verse 14, watch this now. And again, when I say unto the weak that he shall surely die, look, look now, if he turn from his sin and do that which is lawful and right, if the wicked restore the pledge, give again that he had robbed, walk in the statutes of life without committing iniquity, he shall surely live, he shall not die, he will have eternal life. Mm -hmm. It don't matter what folk, folk talk about how you used to be all you want to. But it, now if you come on over here and, and stay here, they can talk about what you done years ago all they want to. You shall surely live. You're going to take on, you're going to get eternal life. Look at verse 16. Watch this now. None of his sins that he hath committed shall be mentioned unto him. Isn't that, that, that's, that's wonderful. None of his sins. Though the folks are talking about it, none of his sins shall be mentioned unto him. He hath he have done that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live. That's why you out there, you, those of you out there that are living a raggedy life, you better repent. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> right. Verse 17, verse 7, look, look now. He said, yet the children of thy people say the way of the Lord is not equal. Now they say that's not fair. Oh, that is fair. Because he, he, again, it's not his will that any should perish, but that all come to repent. See, if the righteous man, he repented, all he had to do was keep doing what he was doing. Mm -hmm. Then don't go back out there. Mm -hmm. And the one that he was cutting up, all he had to do was repent. Come on in. That's, right. Come on in. That's fair. That's yet, the, yet the children of thy people say the way of the Lord is not evil. As for him, as for them, their way is not evil. You, you the one is not fair. Right. When the righteous turn it from his righteousness and commit an iniquity, he shall even die thereby. That, that's fair. The wages of sin and death. We, we know the rules of engagement. Verse 19. But if the wicked turn from his wickedness and do that which is lawful and right, he shall live thereby. Yet ye say the way of the Lord is not equal. Oh, now somehow that's not fair. Amen, amen, amen. I, I could go home with this here, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to just go ahead and cut it off right there. Amen. We thank God for the word of God. There is indeed a family for the hearing of the word of God. Let us not participate in the family. Let us continue to hear the word of God. And not only hear the word of God, but walk in the word of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. We thank God for you. We thank God for all things in the name of the Lord Jesus. I hope I said something to help somebody. Praise the Lord. Amen.